Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. Today we have with us Dom Farnan, who's the founder and CEO of Dot Connect. Dom, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me, Mike. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, so give us a little bit of your background and your entrepreneurial journey up to this point in your career, and then I want to learn about what kind of dots that you help to connect. Awesome. Yeah, so um, I have an interesting background. I've only ever recruited. I actually started recruiting when I was 17. I graduated high school early, wanted to ditch the pizza shop and um, get a quote-unquote real job, which ended up being... How, how to learn recruiting. And from there, it's kind of all I've ever done for the last 20 years before I really started um, building out my team at the beginning of 2019. So w- did you get trained by a company, um, maybe a family friend that got you into recruiting, and then at, at some point you thought, hey, I know the ropes and I can now launch out on my own? Yeah, exactly. So my first gig was um, in corporate. So I worked for a building products company, and I had a really amazing very senior level teams that mentored and coached me and taught me a lot of what I knew. I followed that boss that hired me there to probably five other companies. Mm -hmm. And um, after my third stint with corporate, I decided to go the consulting route, worked for a vendor of ours, then had another amazing boss named Iris, who was a mentor of mine and um, fell in love with working with a lot of different companies. So collectively, I probably, I've probably worked for about 400 different companies throughout my consulting career um, before I decided that at the end of 2018, I was a bit burnt out and I wanted to leverage my skills and abilities and teach people how to recruit. Um, so initially, my, my first team of people was a handful of you know friends and family and people I could pull in to show the ropes before we scaled out our company globally. So now we're about 100 people that sit uh, remote first all over the U.S. and Africa and South Africa. You know, when you were describing that, it reminds me of a seminar that I went to years ago, and this is a great tip for anybody listening to this, whether you want to start a business down the road or not. But the seminar was called The Brand of You. And it was in financial Mm -hmm. services, and they were talking about, hey, you might work for XYZ company that does financial services, but really, you should be building the brand of you. What are you about? What is your mission? What is your vision? How do you serve your clients and build relationships, build your network, your strategic alliances, because no matter where you hang your shingle, so to speak – You then just bring everyone with you, and and you work for this company or that company, and then you decide to start your own doing whatever industry. You're building your own brand and your own network, and that's huge. That's an asset that if if anyone could build that from day one will serve you. And guess what? You can be intrapreneurial working for a company and never start your own but still have that same mindset and succeed wildly. Yeah, absolutely. It's a lot of what I tell my team is focus on the work and you'll and do good work and you'll always have work. And, you know, everyone who is in your network that you've built meaningful relationships with will think of you, refer you, pull you into wherever they are. Um, That's how we get a lot of the client work that we have now and the engagements that that we're in with now is through referrals based both based on candidates that we've hired at other places or former hiring managers or former bosses that we've had. Um, it's all about the relationships. Yep. So then when you're building relationships, um, what is, you know, like, like a lot of people go, you know, oh, hey, um, you sell life insurance. Well, not really. Um, I sell peace of mind. You know, life insurance is the vehicle. Well, what are some of your mission and focus within the recruiting industry rather than just I recruit or I help someone get a job or I teach someone how to get a job? Um, what are some of the broader 30,000 foot view, um, you know, like values you, you uh, uh, follow? Yeah, so um, we just reshaped our values to reflect where we're at and where I'm not at on my leadership journey. Um, I like to consider myself an aspiring conscious leader. And so really what that means is, um, you know, conscious leaders have choices that they have to make every day and choosing how they show up for themselves first 
their teams and their families. Um, but our values are mindful of yourself and others and really having awareness um, of how you're contributing to, to the greater good, willingness to help. Uh, we, we're also growth mindset oriented, ownership and delivery. My team is very driven and we like to have fun. So in the scheme of life, we know that, you know, while what we do is serious and important at the same time, we don't take ourselves too seriously. We're not saving lives. You know, we're helping people get jobs and, and that kind of thing. Um, but for us, you know, the relationship piece is very important. And I think we stay grounded in that and really just treating people with a lot of respect and taking a genuine interest in who they are as a human being. So, you know, if we're not hiring them for one client engagement that we're on, we're still going to maintain that relationship over time to see how we can help them. Ultimately, our goal is, is to help the people and the clients in which we serve. Yeah, you know, you mentioned conscious leadership, and I think that, you know, you hear, you know, like servant leadership and conscious capitalism, right? You know, yeah. like I teach mar- marketing and conscious capitalism is something because you got to make a profit. You don't want to gouge people, yeah. but if you don't make a profit, yeah. then you're not going to be around to serve your community, to pay the, the salaries of your employees. So you have to make a profit, but do it with ethical, a conscious approach. So define and talk a little bit about conscious leadership. What is your uh, your approach that way? Yeah, I mean, I think in this, this day and age of the me culture, we at Dot are really trying to change the paradigm back to a we culture. So I aspire to lead by example and really hold myself accountable, speaking with integrity and coming to work as my whole authentic self. And really that creates a safe space for my team to do the same. Um, When we work with our clients, we really are listening, processing, understanding, infiltrating, and then looking for win for all solutions for them, even if it's not necessarily what they want to hear. Like our outcome is to to help them um, despite things being challenges, constraints, or obstacles. And we really become a part of our clients' inner circles and and are embedded within their companies. Um, We also like to think through and ideate and think about like, what if? So we experiment a lot with how we go and find talent. It's not just LinkedIn all day, every day. I mean, granted, LinkedIn's great, but there are a lot of different ways to tap into talent networks. And really, I think where our magic comes into play is by understanding how to read in between the lines so that we can execute on a really high level for our partners. And ultimately, I think if you know me and you know my team, you'll feel like we really do love what we do. Um, And so, you know, our success is also our client success and, and same with our candidates. So that that will resonate through anyone that you talk to on my team. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like, um, I, I don't know. I mean, you see a lot of this, a lot of this in industry or even movies. It's like, you know, hey, here's this leader that's rolling up their sleeves, literally getting down on their hands and knees, doing this work, whatever the work might be. And their team is like, I'm right behind you because you're not just in the ivory tower, you know, barking out orders. So that's huge to be able to to lead by example, um, whether it's, you know, your actions or attitudes or, you know, uh, you know, just your, your strategy. So I think that conscious leadership is so huge. And, and hopefully um, it starts catching on more than it is, because I have a feeling that, um, you know, one of my daughters actually just uh, is taking graduate school courses. And one of the classes was in leadership and she was her actual direct boss was the teacher and they were talking about in the class how you know leadership should do this and that and she was saying in one of the papers boy it would be wonderful to see our organization do these things meaning yeah that sounds good on paper and in a textbook but it's not happening in real life and you might say it out of one side of your mouth but do it yeah no totally i mean last year we were targeting to work with venture-backed startups and specific mission-driven and values-based organizations. And there were a handful that we landed as clients, but the minute that we got in there, um, it was a very different experience. So they portrayed mission-driven and values-based, and then internally it was toxic and mm-hmm. a lot of projection and drama and just things that we don't tolerate. So we churn some clients and I'll be the first one to stand up and push back to these clients and say, yeah, we're not going to put up with that. And that's not the way I run my organization. And I'm never going to put my team in a situation where everything's amazing at dot. And then they get in 
inside a client and it's a different story and they're coming to us yeah. crying or, you know, not safe or anything like that. Because that's actually a reflection on your brand when you are placing an employee into an organization like that, then that employee goes, wow, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Or, so or I, not I, thanks. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think right now we're, you know, we're ripe for a new shift in conscious leadership. It's still very new. And I know for myself, we have a hundred people who are on the team and turning this ship, even though it's smaller compared to a lot of our clients um, and getting people tapped into their own awakening and journey of inner work and healing and all the things that it takes to be conscious um, and have practices that will help and support you in that has been challenging. I'm, I'm noticing it myself. You know, I go and do spiritual retreats and I, I bring things back to my team and I find that maybe 50, 60 percent of people are, are into it and the rest are not. So yeah. I know that my mission in life and, and vision one day will be to have 100 percent of my team backing this conscious commitment and way, way of being um, that will then create a bigger impact in the world and the clients that we're serving. Awesome. Hey, let's uh, let's roll into this thing that's going around these days, which is the great resignation. And we talked a little bit about the um, brand of you and networking and, and staying in touch with people. Well, do you feel like this great resignation is happening where people are feeling like I can resign and, and go and start my own thing or go to another company or take a break for a while? And I know that I, I'm marketable. What is the mindset there with people that are participating in this? And do you feel like they they are just so confident in their skills that they go, I can do what I want when I want. Yeah, I think I've seen all of the above as yeah. far as buckets of people. I've seen full burnout people. I've seen people who want to take a pause and have the means to do that. I've seen people who completely change careers. We had a magic show a couple of weeks ago with a former recruiter turned magician who's just like crushing it with with his magic literally now. Um, and he exited from being a recruiter probably, you know, a, hand, a couple of years ago. So it wasn't that long ago. Um, and I definitely think people are looking at their skills and considering that they can be transferable. I'm seeing a lot of teachers come up. Teachers are no longer wanting to be in this system and be educators, but you know, you can repurpose those skills for, several different things for corporate learning and development and adult yes. education, continuing education. And there's a huge um, influx of opportunity for people creating their own, um, you know, training programs. We, for example, have Path Connect, which is our 12 week recruiter accelerator and boot camp. We have one for our technical recruiters and we're building out one for business recruiting and high volume recruiting as well. Right now, we've offered it to our team internally, but ultimately, we're going to open it up to the market and put it out there so that anyone can sign up, get education on how to be a recruiter, and then be able to do that you know, anywhere in the world, working from home and making a living wage. You know, that's a really big point you bring up with education, and that's just a, one example um, because you don't need to feel like you need to work for an educational system. You could go corporate, and you could even go corporate and have the side hustle these days, which is easier yeah. than ever. You know, it used to be yeah. like, oh, I need to have two full-time jobs or I need to have a part-time moonlighting. But these days, it's like having that side hustle and creating a piece of educational training content that you can sell on your own may be totally different than what you're teaching in the corporate world or in the classroom. Maybe it's your passion. And and now, yeah. all of a sudden, you're, you know, pouring yourself into that and it does not feel like work and you're making a buck or two and then it grows a little bit and then maybe that allows you to make the move into something different. But I think that maybe the the paradigm shift of, wow, I used to punch the clock, so to speak, or or get my paycheck, maybe people are realizing that creativity and flexibility is something that can be attained. Absolutely. I mean, I look at my friend Kat who started, she goes by Miss Excel on TikTok and Instagram, and she started selling Excel training courses, but she made it fun and silly yeah. and paired it with music and all of these things. And she went viral, I think, early COVID days. And now that's her only source of income and she's growing her company around it. Um, but before she was in consulting, you know, and just was obsessed with Excel and loved it and felt like, yeah. hey, if 
success. There's other people who probably nerd out on it like me or want to know how to be more effective leveraging the tools that we have in corporate. Um, that's just one example. I have another friend, Adam Roa, who built out a whole community called the Create Community around his passion for creativity and inspiring people. And that's a subscription-based membership that you can join and, you know, kickstart creative projects, whatever they may be. So if someone were to come to you and say, Dom, you are a force to be reckoned with, you've got a lot of knowledge, not only in recruiting, but in life business, what is, what would you say would be one of your um, things you could mentor someone on, take someone under your wing and kind of guide them along with some of the life lessons that you've learned? Yeah, I would say where I'm at and what, what is really coming up as exciting for me is I've been running my company and building it since 2019. Um, but before that, I was a solopreneur as a recruiter. So I'm still passionate about leveling up and mentoring and coaching junior recruiters and watching them flourish in their own careers. But secondly, I have an interest in helping earlier stage entrepreneurs females um, in particular, and helping them to stay inspired and motivated and get grounded in how they can tap into their own power and grow their companies, um, taking the lessons I've learned and making sure it doesn't have to be as hard as I may have made it for myself the first few years. If I look back to the early days of Dot Connect in 2019, 2020, I was a very different person than I am now as far as my leadership. I was Kind of, I would consider myself a toxic corporate boss, micromanaging, perfectionistic. I had a lot of saboteurs that were working against me and not for me. And um, since then, I've tapped into, you know, my own spiritual awakening, my inner healing work, my consciousness masterminds that I'm a part of, and, and just different modalities that have helped me, like breath work and plant medicine and other things that I can leverage to heal myself, which has then, in turn, created a bigger opportunity for my, for my company. Like my company has grown and I've been going through this whole journey of my own healing and transformation and shedding of old things. And um, so I definitely have a, a passion for helping women who might be earlier stage than where we're at that might need that little extra support. Awesome. Well, that's so neat when you can just do way more than just the thing that you're known for doing when you can bring in all of those other elements and make make uh, uh, your work fun, fulfilling, uh, and, and make it to where it's more than just about you or even your company. You know, you're making a ripple effect and you think about the old uh, story about the butterfly effect, you know, but you throw that, <clears throat> that pebble in the pond and you see ripples for, you know, down the road. Well, that's a huge uh, legacy that you can be building not just in profits and, and only uh, the money at the bottom line. So love that. Love your, your uh, crusade that you're on. What's the best way, Dom, that someone hearing this can go, I would like to learn more, whether it's recruiting or Dom's journey and where she can maybe uh, help me out. What's the best way they can reach out, connect with you? Yeah, sure. So for me personally, I'm on Instagram at, at I am Dom Farnan. Um, I also have a website, domfarnan.com. You can find my, my team at .connectllc.com or weare.connect on Instagram. Awesome. Well, Dom, thank you so much for coming on today. It was a real pleasure talking with you. Thanks, Mike. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.